Welcome. Last time we began our study of objective spirit and its institutions which embody the reality of freedom and its realization. And we took a close look at its first phase, abstract right or law, and its three moments, property, contract, and wrong. Today, we will take up morality and the first phase of ethical life, the family. First, a review. We have transitioned from subjective spirit and the concept of freedom to the reality and realization of freedom, which takes place in objective spirit and its three phases, right, morality, and ethical life. In right, i.e. outer or objective right, we saw the free individual, the absolutely infinite free will, as a person embodying his will in an external thing, his property, which he then, in contract, exchanged with another person, which led to the three kinds of wrong, civil and criminal. In crime, we saw the individual will in conflict with the universal will involving a negation of right, which resulted in the negation of this negation, punishment, and the concrete vindication of right. The negation of right and its restoration thus involved subjectivity and the subjective will, which allowed us to transition to morality, inner or subjective right. One, morality. We have moved from the free individual as person to the free individual as subject. Recall that the free will is infinite and all that is. It just has to realize this. Also, it is morality that supplies the real side of freedom and spirit because the existence of freedom can only be in subjectivity. <clears throat> uh, note that our account here will also draw from Hegel's outlines of the philosophy of right translated by Knox and Hulgate. Now, logically, morality is essence and relation. That is, right is universality and being, morality, particularity and essence, and ethical life, individuality and the concept. So, morality involves separation, relation, and the ought, that is, relation between the subjective free will, or conscience, and the good, the objective, rational, and universal. Thus, the subjective will ought to do the good and realize the good in the world, and thus be good, be a good will, a good person. But the unity of the will and the good cannot be achieved here in morality, since we are in essence and relation. Only in ethical life, the moment of the concept and individuality, can unity be achieved. Note also that the good, the absolute end of the world, can exist only in the will. What is important is that subjective or moral freedom entails the right of freedom. I am free to recognize and approve only what I think is right. And morality as inner or subjective right entails the right of the subject. It is my conscience that decides if an action is right or good. Now, the right of the moral will has three aspects. 
purpose and responsibility, intention and well-being, and good and evil and conscience. One, purpose and responsibility. This is the formal right of action, that the content of the action be entirely mine. That is, if an action is to be moral, it must correspond with my purpose, since I have a right to recognize in the result only my inward purpose and nothing else. Two, intention and well-being. The intention is the action's inner essential content, what I take to be the value of the action, or why I think it is valid. That is, questions may be asked about the intention behind the action as regards the relative value of the action in relation to me. Did I do it just for my gain? On the other hand, my right of well-being means my right for the content of my action to reflect the particularity of my needs and interests and promote my well-being. Three, good and evil and conscience. Not the relative value of the action, but its universal or absolute value is the good which is the content of my action as inward and objective universality. The good is the absolute end of the will and is opposed to a subjective universality of conscience, which is evil. <laughs>